okay we will uh, start the session so host can join the members who are uh, joining the session so let me uh, warmly welcome our resource person uh, engineer salavidana for the session um, we warmly welcome you it's uh, honor and, uh, uh, it's a pleasure for us to join uh, you as the resource person today engineer salavidana we warmly welcome and uh, 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 on behalf of the members of our uh, uh, chapter so i will uh, share your pro profile with them uh, please let me uh, share with your, share with the members of your profile uh, engineer uh, sst salavidana who is the resource person of today's uh, program uh, is graduated from uh, university of peradeniya as a civil engineer in 2004 Uh, he completed his master's uh, engineering degree in highway and traffic engineering from university of moratua in 2011 uh, he is a chartered engineer as well as a fellow member of isl uh, also he is a member of the chartered institution of highways and transportation united kingdom uh, engineer salovidan is uh, he is currently serving as the additional director highway design of road development authority Uh, who has involved in many large scale highway design projects uh, more than 15 years as a designer and uh, as a reviewer uh, notably uh, uh, in central expressway and uh, ruwanpura expressway uh, in addition to that engineer <coughs> salavidan is a is an invited lecturer for highways design in isl and uh, university of moratua as well as university of sri jawardhanapura for the cpd courses bsc in and msc programs in addition to that uh, he is uh, own uh, his own research publications and also he is a uh, uh, co-supervisor and co-author of many bsc and msc research publications uh, across sri lankan academia in highway engineering uh, apart from that he is a viva panelist of m in and m field research and actively engaged in moderation of researchers of bsc in and msc students uh, and uh, engineer salavidan is an invited lecturer of isl provincial chapters uh, in addition to that he is a uh, um, uh, not only a uh, highways uh, and traffic expert he is a it expert uh, let me uh, share about his it skills also uh, engineer salavidan is uh, it skills have gained him advanced diploma in it from university of colombo and also he got the professional membership of british computer society and the computer society of sri lanka and institution of electrical and electronic engineers usa so he is the co-author of a complete guide to the computer aided highway design in sri lanka which is currently used as the manual of computer aided highway design in the industry and uh, engineer salavid vidana is a registered mentor for the professional membership of british computer society so that's what uh, file uh, in india salavidan it uh, took uh, almost 5 minutes for me to uh, share your profile with uh, with the members so that gives a brief idea about how uh, well experienced you are and how uh, academically qualified you are so we are really honored and impressed with your presence uh, it's a pleasure for us to um uh, join you as the resource person without taking much time i invite you uh, to start the session uh, over to you engineer salavidan yeah uh, thank you very much uh, now can you see me no not yet not yet is it you see Yeah. Anyway, uh, 
please uh, see it is not show in something some problem anyway uh, thank you very much uh, engineer chamila sampath uh, my good friend uh, from the university times some i think some 20 20 22 uh, years back uh, well uh, actually i am uh, very much honored to uh, address this uh, uh, pro uh, provincial chapter of iesl uh, regarding this uh, how do highway engineers uh, treat junctions now uh, of course uh, now this is an educational session uh, mostly now last time when i did in uh, isl uh, k goal uh, chapter that was of course some uh, general session but this is an educational session so those who are uh, interested about highway engineering so they can be a little bit benefited with this lecture now uh, can you hear me yeah sure we can hear you ah okay right so uh, without wasting time uh, we'll quickly uh, go into the lecture uh, because we are running out of time uh, well uh, now first of all we have to think why we are going to go for junction treatments okay why we are going to go for junction treatments so now you can see here in this slide what has happened in this junction what do you think about this and now usually even though uh, you may laugh on this maybe this is the same scenario that we face every day in large cities in sri lanka so earlier it was limited to say colombo and candy or kurunagala but no more now we are very rapidly urbanizing with the urbanization there comes junctions and ill disciplined drivers uh, and uh, then uh, the right of way conflicts like this now you can see everybody is going to have the right of way well, what do you mean by right of way same plain english right of way means the the ownership of the road for the time being now yeah uh, now there comes the common right of way with that there comes the conflicts so when the conflicts come mm -hmm. there is reduced capacity with the reduced capacity there comes delays and accidents and then we have to go for control now in civil engineering especially in highway engineering there is one golden rule that we try to follow what is this that is number one option number one do nothing what do you mean by do nothing? Do nothing means if a junction is functioning smoothly, we should not go there and act as a bull in a china shop. Okay, let that junction function itself. That's our rule number one. But if there are problems only, we are going to do something there. Why I say that? Now sometimes you might see that it's some junctions in Sri Lanka there is no any problem but what what happens is after some time some people go there and then install some signal design then what happens everything is stuck nobody can go there are long queues and delays and everything so number one rule rule number one is do nothing and then only if there's a question or if there are an issue only we should go and intervene all right so we'll right so uh, we'll go to uh, discuss a little bit about common types of junctions so we have this uh, right angle intersections okay so this can be right angle right right angle this t junction is also right angle and then skewed skewed in the sense something like this or something like this okay then t type this is t or y type this like this and then multiple intersections like this now uh, you know if you go if you remember Borella some uh, say 25 years back it was a uh, multiple intersection right uh, there was a roundabout of course uh, but uh, there are five roads there okay the baseline means it is uh, two roads and then there comes Maradana road and uh, there comes Kota road okay one two three four and then this what place five so if 
if the number of legs of an intersection is going to go beyond 4 it is very difficult to it's very difficult to uh, you know uh, to control it okay so we have to think of novel methods that is why in Borella we have closed down this uh, word place road okay so that means we have banned entering vehicles from the word place with that we have effectively made it a four-way junction okay so these are the things that we have to study so anyway uh, these are the common types of junctions that we face every day okay and then we'll discuss a little about little bit about junction treatment methods now uh, do you see that uh, figure here this is a you know uh, an animated figure now you just uh, have a look the, now this is uh, this may be from India or from the continent uh, now you know everybody is uh, very nicely manual nothing happens uh, but this I will say this is the sheer luck otherwise what will happen is so there will be uh, so many accidents Atlanta, I think this is quite uh, you know this is quite abnormal you can't do this say do you think this is possible it's not possible at all so just see how many lanes how many lanes and then how many conflicts but still they are managing so maybe some two three minutes they could manage like this because you see you know sometimes have you seen that uh, in uh, four-way junctions there is signalization the signal uh, signal installation but what happens is sometimes the police comes and they switch off the signal that is quite okay then they go and control that's quite okay but later what happens is now after a while he understands ah, okay now the peak hour is finished now vehicles are less so now what he is going to do uh, he is going somewhere and uh, then maybe he is uh, uh, just like uh, he is having some good time and just looking at the junction now it's a four way junction uh, no signals and no police officer now what happens now you know in a four way junction uh, normal drivers even the disciplined drivers they cannot they cannot maneuver without the assistance of signalize, uh, signalization or a police officer or whatever roundabout of course they can okay because roundabout is self-regulatory but uh, in such a four-way junction it is not possible so this is a kind of uh, ill practice okay is this a ill practice either there should be a police officer or there should be signalization so we'll discuss a little bit about junction treatment methods uh, number one then I'm, I'm going to discuss these things in detail unchannelized unplayed or simple intersections so don't worry what is this unchannelized unplayed i'm going to tell you then flared intersections channelized intersections then roundabouts signalized intersections and then finally comes the red separated intersections or flyovers so here this is a simple intersection okay now you just see there are four legs there are four legs for each leg now remember uh, these uh, jargons are quite different right uh, now uh, in Sri Lanka we call them legs okay uh, maybe in America they call them arms okay so the English is everywhere so that uh, sometimes we use different terminologies in Sri Lankan context we call them legs okay so uh, you know uh, now there are four legs and one leg has three movements these are called movements separate streams okay so three into four there are 12 movements so with 12 movements just see how many config points are there okay so you can just count one two three four five six seven eight here you have eight then 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 there are 16 config points okay so what is the config point now you see if a vehicle stream is going like this if another stream is coming this way here there is a config point and another one is coming here so there is a config point so there are 16 
<coughs> sorry there are 16 concrete points so as a highway engineer as a highway engineer or a highway designer our target is to reduce these conflicts or to eliminate these conflicts so you can reduce by using a roundabout you can eliminate by using signals that is exactly what we are going to do okay so uh, uh, here uh, this text says unchannelized or unflared unchannelized means there are no channelization that means there are no uh, islands there now what is a, why it is an island so i think you know if there is uh, some construction uh, in an intersection uh, into some shape so that is called an island okay unchannelized means that uh, you don't have uh, you mean uh, you don't have uh, separate uh, lanes okay separate lanes divided by these channels channelization and unflared means unflared means now have you seen that uh, uh, this right uh, right turn movements in some four way junctions that right turn lane is bit flared okay that means it is taken little bit uh, little bit away from the uh, normal traffic flow that is called flare just the plain english word flare okay so this unchannelized to unflared simple intersections maintain the streets typical cross section and number of lanes throughout the intersection on both the major and minor streets so there are no additional lanes for right turn okay no additional lane for left lane if there are two lanes coming here just two lanes if there is only one lane coming here just one lane so that is a simple intersection so they are best suited for uh, the locations where uh, there, there is less traffic flow okay so you don't have a heavy uh, stream of right turns you don't have a heavy strong stream of left turn okay so this is for some just for some uh, rural intersection where the, uh, the the number of vehicles are less so they are uh, usually you find these things in uh, far away places like uh, you know where there is the vehicle fleet is not very high okay so here there is an advantage here because you know if you are going to go for a, a simple intersection without any control okay without any control these crossing distances for pedestrians they are going to be less okay they are going to be less otherwise what happens now if you are going to have a center median here and instead of two lanes if you are going to have three lanes just one for right turn two for straights and another one another one for left lane so all together four so what happens what about the crossing distance for the pedestrians it's going to be high so this is the basic intersection simple intersection then uh, these intersections can be t y or four leg or multi leg or whatever right here can you see now here they have given a, a, you know a, the center median uh, yeah you can have a center median for a simple intersection still there are no any other control okay there are no any other control now the the, the center median is also for the major road not for the minor road okay now you have to understand something now this uh, the construction of these uh, center medians then uh, sometimes these splitter islands splitter islands means the islands that you find uh, on on an intersection okay uh, and these uh, center medians then the splitter islands and uh, what else yeah these two these two of course in sri lanka we are going to build it on the road okay but in some countries especially i have seen in uh, uh, south korea they don't build this they just draw it actually they they propose this thing here for our baseline road also some 10 years back but we opposed why because our discipline is not that good now if you are going to draw this if you are going to draw this instead of constructing it what will happen now when one vehicle is stopping here another three wheeler or a motorcycle will come this way 
so that is not very suitable for Sri Lanka so we have to have designs country specific okay so that is what I'm always uh, you know uh, even uh, in my workplace uh, and when I do my lectures in universities I always tell people we have to go for country specific designs otherwise just uh, taking something from Europe or uh, America or uh, the East Asia and then you go and you come and put that into Sri Lanka that's not going to work country specific designs that is why designs are there that is why they are paid to go for new innovations okay and then many intersections remain unchanalized in urban areas or into economic reasons so this is a uh, very good point in Colombo now uh, every day I am going to Colombo uh, for my personal matters now uh, sometimes I uh, I just think that uh, you know it is not a planned city now you have very narrow streets so it is very difficult to traverse so sometimes I think so one day uh, will there be any widening will there be any improvement but sometimes I just think no not in foreseeable future this not because you see in one side there may be four story five story high buildings so how you are going to improve it no, so, so we have to, you, know, you can't do that, you can't widen it. So maybe we'll have to just think about some other innovation. Now, now you know, uh, now some uh, 20 years back, okay, in a year 2000 or something. Yeah, as I remember, yeah, year, year 2000 something, okay. So uh, they implemented this one way, Uniflow. Okay, Uniflow is claiming, is claiming Colombo. Now it is of course successful okay earlier there were a lot of traffic congestion especially in uh, you know this uh, uh, in uh, Tumula Junction like in Tumula Junction and uh, now when you come there uh, to this uh, uh, the Albert Crescent and things so Albert Crescent is in front of this museum okay so you know there were a lot of congestion at that time but now it is no more so things have improved but with the simple intersections and with some innovative methods of course we can go for some improvements and uh, now i'll tell you what is flared now can you see here now this road two floors are going straight and this is an additional lane given for the right turning this is also an additional lane given for the right turn this is called a flared flared lane okay the flared intersections right now can you uh, now maybe if the people if the, if the engineers who are not in the highway field there if they have joined just uh, have a look here have a look here now can you see that uh, here uh, if one person if one person who wants to go straight if he is going to stop here he can't go look if he goes straight what what will happen he will go and knock on this person okay so that is intentionally being done to avoid people violating the lane discipline okay, so this is called a flared intersection so the flaring is often done to accommodate a left turn lane so left turn is here right so that is also possible but you have to understand now most of the time when you re read these things okay from a textbook or something just check what is the lane discipline and what is the uh, the the, uh, the side of the road they are using only in britain and uh, some of their colonies uh, the vehicles are being drive driven in the left hand side in all other countries the vehicles are driven in the right hand side okay so once they say left turn it can be right turn but here of course it is left turn. left is left not right but in the textbooks of course you have to think about that otherwise uh, sometimes uh, one textbook will say uh, left turn left turning is the critical okay but that is because they are traveling at the other side of the road okay just think of the mirror image the mirror image of this right but in our country and in uh, countries like India, Australia, New Zealand and UK and uh, maybe South Africa uh, and Japan not in here. So the, uh, the drive the vehicles are driven in the left hand side so in our case 
the right turn is the critical one. So uh, the left turn lanes, let's frequently use the right turn lanes. Why? Because uh, of course uh, sometimes people can argue there is no point giving a left lane here because they can just pass it the this straight movement. So, uh, but if there is a large volume of traffic here, so they can have another auxiliary lane. They are called an auxiliary lane for the left turn. So, then uh, this intersections may be flared to accommodate an additional through lane as well. Okay, so sometimes you can have another lane. Okay, another lane. Another lane means, so just think that you are having only one lane from A to B. Just think here. From A to B, you are having only one lane. So here two lane. If you want, you can have three lane by flaring. Okay, so this approach is effective in increasing capacity at isolated rural or suburban settings. Okay, uh, in which lengthy widening of beyond the intersection is not uh, needed to achieve. Uh, just think that... Uh, if you have uh, uh, seen these uh, intersections uh, near Colombo, maybe you have seen sometimes uh, the road is only four lane, but you have three lanes to one side for the straight. Okay, so that is flaring for additional lane. Sometimes uh, maybe in uh, far away places you might have seen the road is two lane, so that means to one side is one lane, but at the intersection alone you have two lanes to one side. That is using flaring. So then uh, once you flare it, once you flare it slightly, then you can just ease out the vehicle turning moves. Okay. Now uh, before that, uh, you just see this uh, intersection. See how nice is that? And now there is some bicycle facilities also, right? So now this is wrong, right? This is a violation. You cannot. Uh, encroach the bicycle lane but here you can see there is a bicycle lane so the bicycles are coming and then they wait here in front of the vehicles motor vehicles okay once you get the green signal what happens is the bicycles are going first okay bicycles are going first so uh, they can either go this way and join here or else if they want to have a right turn they have to go this way this way and like this Okay, otherwise if they want to get a left turn, they can go this. So this is a very nice picture of a kind of a, a flared intersection with, with what? With bicycle lanes. That is why I put it here. Uh, so this type of flaring has benefits to bicycle and motor vehicle flow. Since high speed turning movements at the intersection are possible, an encroachment by larger turning vehicles into other vehicle paths is reduced. But there is a problem. What is that? Adding flow to an intersection increases the pedestrian crossing distance and time. So that is a bit difficult for signal calculation. Okay, because you know uh, for each and every movement you have to give time. So if it is like uh, even if it is pedestrians, so you have to consider the pedestrians and you have to give the time for the pedestrians. So uh, maybe your signal timing is going to be in a mess. So we'll uh, discuss a little bit about this channelized intersection. Now you see uh, channelization. Now uh, they are being, you know, like this. They are being channelized like this. Okay. Have you seen this kind of thing? Not in Sri Lanka, right? Not in Sri Lanka, of course. So Sri Lanka, of course, uh, what we are doing is basically uh, doing the minimum necessary. Okay. Why? Now I'm always telling you, even my students, I'm telling. Don't just look at these junctions like, uh, you know, uh, the junction designs in Australia or USA or something because these are large countries where you have large spaces. But I think for this uh, junction design, we should, of course, adopt uh, the junction design practice from Great Britain. It's like, it's like our country. Why I say like this? Because, you know, this Australia, Canada, USA, all these things were built within last 200 years there were nothing okay there was nothing in that uh, in these countries before that and they are yeah of course there were some ancient civilization and things 
but you know uh, now as far as the modern country is considered there was nothing in these countries some 200 300 years back so they had enough lands okay so you can have uh, some liberal designs okay you could have some liberal designs there but you know britain is not like that okay so you go to uh, widen something there is that king george uh, one or two or three is something or something there okay and then you go to this side there is queen victoria or queen elizabeth so uh, this thing or that thing here same thing here in sri lanka okay same thing here in sri lanka you can't go for widening in most of the things not only these uh, archaeological sites but sometimes because you know sri lankan cities of course we don't have anything called cities except colombo even colombo is not a planned city but even in sri lankan townships okay so they were uh, sometimes uh, if you go to now just think that this uva right now uh, you just think about badul so what about the badul's history so maybe you know maybe it goes back to this ravana time some 4000 years back so there was a town like that a town you can't call it a town but township or something okay at that time also you had something and there were people living there okay so what happens now if you are going to go there and go, you are going to widen something if you are going to demolish so there are a lot of objections so this kind of things are not really possible so what we are going to do is to do the minimum that is necessary okay so this channelized intersection okay they they use pavement markings or rest islands you hear rest islands to designate the intended vehicle paths that's right okay then uh, this use is for left turns uh, then uh, accompanied by an auxiliary left turn lane here auxiliary left turn lane at skewed intersections channelization islands are often used to delineate left turn now you see if this is right turn this is fairly easy but if it is just think that the other road is like this then when you are going to give the left turn of course there is a very big space here left unattended so you have to give a channelized uh, you mean uh, channelized island or a split island okay so then intersections located on a curve of course so divisional uh, islands can help direct drivers to and to the intersection right this is another such junction okay see the size of the junction okay size of junction so here uh, this is from uh, some uh, country that uh, driving is from the right hand side right so here you are having uh, three three straight lanes and two right turn lanes so left turn left turn now they are left turn but in our case it's our, our right turn right if you take the mirror image this is going to be right turn right so uh, so in large intersections of course this uh, short median island so here median islands like this they can be used effectively for pedestrian refuge pedestrian refuge in the sense now if they want to cross this road what happens is they come this way and they can wait here now have you seen in gold road they have done the same thing so this is called a refuge refuge for pedestrians otherwise uh, otherwise we have to give long time okay otherwise we have to give long time durations for uh, pedestrians in our signal calculation and that's not going to work okay so then uh, channelization islands can be used in uh, right turn lanes forming the ends of the taper approaching the turn bay and often the narrow division island extend to the intersection then uh, at t type intersections a channelization island can guide oncoming traffic to the left or the right turn lane Channelized intersection are usually large. Can you see that? Otherwise, if, if this is not a channelized intersection, it will be now you know this turning is not there, this turning is not there, this turning, this turning, all these turnings are not there. So it's going to be very small. But if you are going to channelize it, of course, the intersection is going to be large. Right? However, the channelization okay. islands can effectively reduce the crossover distance. Here, they can wait here. So they start here, go this way, they wait here, they cross here, they wait here, then cross here, like this. Okay, so here in uh, which pedestrians are exposed to moving, moving uh, uh, motor vehicles, so that is going to be effectively reduced. Okay. 
Okay, uh, then we'll discuss a little bit about roundabouts. Okay, everybody knows roundabouts. Now, some uh, 20, uh, 25 years back, we had so many roundabouts. Even in Colombo, we had many roundabouts. Uh, now I remember in Borella, we had a roundabout. And here uh, near this uh, castle uh, hospital, we had a roundabout. Now most of the things are removed. Why you are going to remove the roundabout? Okay, because you know there is a traffic threshold uh, for a roundabout. Beyond that, of course, you can't use the roundabout. It's not going to work. And roundabouts are uh, self-regulatory. Self-regulatory in the sense you don't want to go and control the traffic because it, you have the now in Sri Lankan roundabouts or uh, the where the uh, vehicles are traveling on the left hand side of course you are having this uh, right hand rule that means you have to wait for the uh, vehicles coming in the right hand side uh, other other countries other countries it, it is going to be left hand rule so you have to wait for the uh, vehicles that are coming from the left hand side of your uh, the, the, the vehicles that are coming from the left hand side okay then can you see that uh, now why this is going to be self regulatory now you know this is a say from here can you see this cursor from here to here it's straight straight but of course you have to enter the roundabout and here due to this curvature your speed is going to be reduced okay so that is a quite quite something called traffic calming okay it's quite something called traffic calming so that means you are going to calm the traffic that you are going to reduce the speed of the traffic okay so that is why uh, the roundabout is self regulated now after entering here so you are going to give 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 way for the uh, people who are coming in the right and then you complete your manual like this and there's another advantage is you can allow u-turns without disturbing the other people if in a signalized junction if you are going to give a u-turn what happens is the right turners are going to be disturbed because they have to wait until this uh, the, the u-turners are taking their turn and then uh, the, the green is over it's again red so i have seen this in baseline road most of the time because there are uh, no separate u-turns so what happens is in, a, in an intersection when they are going to get this U-turn, all other people have to wait until they finish their uh, manual. So, but this is going to be resolved in a roundabout. Okay, so here the roundabout is a tantalized intersection with one-way traffic flow circulating around the central island. Now, again, remember one thing: in Sri Lanka. We usually don't have roundabouts, right? Okay, these most of the roundabouts we are having in this country are mini roundabouts. So, what is this uh, diameter in our country? It's going to be four meters. So, they come to the they fall to the category of mini roundabouts. Of course, you have to have 10 meter, 15 meter, 20 meter like diameters. And can you see what is this pink color thing? Why is this? Huh? For the aesthetics? No, it's not for the aesthetics. That is for because you know a roundabout or an intersection is usually designed for a design vehicle, maybe for the single unit truck or that means just normal lorry or the normal bus that you are traveling. Then these are for other vehicles, the heavy vehicles and long vehicles for them to maneuver. So when they are going to maneuver, when they are going to take the turn, so you have to they have to encroach this uh, pink color strip that is why it is there okay so all the usually circular in shape the central island of a roundabout can be oval or irregular shape now in Kota, can you see that they have given some oval shape okay so shape can be anything oval or irregular the roundabout can be appropriate design alternative to both stop control and signal control intersections as they have fewer con config points than traditional intersections okay so you know uh, but sometimes you can signalize them but remember there is one rule 
you don't go and install a round about it then then the, you go to signalize it it's, it's not the way if there is an existing roundabout of course you can go and to improve the efficiency you can signalize it but you don't install a roundabout with signalization Right, uh, then uh, intersections of two lanes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, at intersections of two lane streets, roundabouts can usually function with single circulating lane like this, making it possible to fit them into most settings. Then uh, roundabouts are also considered as traffic calming devices that I told you. And uh, you know, uh, in roundabout, there is nothing called major street and minor street. Okay, all have the same right of way. Then, uh, why the roundabouts? Okay, uh, so it is uh, more suitable than the traffic signal control if the right turn in traffic exceeds about 30% of all approaching traffic. So, these are using some research. Then it provides easy facility for right turn traffic. Okay, can you see how they take the right turning? Uh, and roundabouts are not suitable where the angle of intersection of two roads is very acute. Okay, so if they, if you are having some acute angle, the roundabout is not very suitable because you cannot provide this kind of this left turn and things. Okay, uh, it is suitable when traffic is less and speeds are not very high. Then uh, roundabouts uh, usually reduce conflicts. Then vehicle operating costs are going to be less. Maintenance cost is negligible, okay, because you don't have to uh, provide for electricity. Then uh, another problem is a roundabout requires a large area that you can't help, okay. And uh, for the pedestrians, there are no dedicated facilities. Then uh, it is not suitable for more than when more than five roads intersects. So uh, we are of course running out of time. Then uh, quickly we'll uh, go through these traffic signals. Okay, everybody knows what is traffic signals. They uh, how do they function? They use in uh, changing color. Uh, they regulate the movement of traffic. The, the one disadvantage, one basic disadvantage for those uh, colorblind people. Um, you just think that of course in our country usually uh, still we are not considering these things how the disabled are to be treated and uh, of course the word disabled is uh, now now it's going to be obscene we call them a differently abled okay so and this colorblind uh, and of course we have to think about this how how we are going to serve them okay so that is one uh, disadvantage at the at the first site and uh, you see uh, so there are some warrants that I'm not going to discuss here warrants means what should be the traffic threshold uh, then uh, what, what what should be the traffic threshold in a major street what should be the traffic threshold in a minor street and if there is a school and what is the pedestrian traffic there are eight warrants so at least uh, five to six you have to uh, satisfy otherwise uh, the traffic signals are not going to work that is why in some places the traffic signals are going to fail okay so these are the advantages we are having they can provide for the orderly movement of traffic where proper physical layouts and control measures are used they can increase the traffic handling capacity of the intersection they can reduce the frequency of certain types of accidents especially right angle type right and uh, so they can be uh, you know they can be coordinated like this now of course uh, in south korea i have seen that there is some uh, traffic control unit so the people are sitting there so everywhere they look to uh, to some monitors so what is happening uh, so if the traffic signal is going to fail they take into manual control and they they are trying to uh, release the vehicles manually vehicle queues manually so these things can be done using uh, signalized intersections and of course uh, you can have uh, the signalized intersections where signal calculations are being yeah. done on site right now last time uh, one engineer asked me whether ai can be used of course yes ai can be used these things uh, for, used for these, these things uh, just for the algorithm okay so 
you know that is quite quite an advancement okay quite an advancement of the calculation now now we have some theory and according to these theories we calculate either we can calculate calculate manually now in Sri Lanka of course what we do is we are having some kind of uh, say uh, some 16 type of blocks so that means the, uh, now you know uh, the traffic uh, counts are taken every 15 minutes time now no uh, you know uh, for each and every 15 minutes you are going to give some number so we have to you have to group them into 16 groups so the 16 is the maximum that you can change signal time okay so we are far behind okay but uh, you know in developed countries what they do is they calculate or they detect the number of vehicles on site and then they do the calculations on site and then they give the traffic signal timing and when it comes to ai you can change the algorithm as well okay so they can be used to interrupt heavy traffic to permit other traffic vehicular pedestrian like that uh, they can be used to increase driver confidence and to reduce driver stress levels by actual right of way so that is one good thing okay so you you can reduce the driver stress so otherwise what happens is even if it is a roundabout or uh, now sometimes have you seen that there is a police service and then and then we are waiting in our car and scolding at this poor person uh, he is not allowing us to go but he has to think about all the traffic movements okay but we just think so why why doesn't he give us but when if but if there is a traffic signal we don't so so we trust engineers more than the police officers that is one thing that you have to think right so what are the disadvantages so then if it is improper or unwarranted signal installation there can be disadvantages excessive delay okay so there can be uh, the delays that are going to be increased and uh, then uh, in off peak hours off peak hours means now you know uh, mostly we do the designs for peak hours but uh, i told you that there are some 16 blocks okay 16 blocks that we are going to uh, take these 16 blocks and uh, do the design but uh, sometimes these can fail in off peak hours so uh, in off peak hours the signal the signal whole signal system can be seen as a blunder okay so even the best designed and operated signals usually increase delay when compared to unsignalized intersections so that is one disadvantage however unnecessary delays is a common feature of an unwarranted or an improperly designed traffic signal so that is the major thing so if you have not done the calculation properly definitely they will uh, they will uh, result in delays and uh, if it is unwarranted so what will happen uh, the people will not obey the signalization so that is going to be a major issue for the whole country so then delays at unwarranted or poorly designed traffic signals and then can breed gross disrespect towards signals as well as other traffic control devices so then there is going to be a major issue in the country because nobody is going to respect your traffic control devices uh, then uh, so how many times have you uh, gone uh, through you know uh, the d routes or bypasses to bypass sorry not bypasses by road to bypass uh, the traffic signal so that is being encouraged then uh, if there is no engineer sound engineering analysis accident frequency can be significantly increased then the widespread confusion okay so our last thing this flyover uh, so we'll discuss a little bit about flyover so why we use flyovers they are used as the last resort of junction control okay so if nothing is going to work we can try this failure of flyover would result in banning some movements so that means you can ban the right turn movements okay then very costly that you know right and what about the acquisition acquisition is going to be very high now i remember when it comes to mudia got flyover uh, in uh, highway engineering academia there are a lot of criticism why did they do that okay but anyway you can see but one thing i'm what i'm telling is if you are going to have a flyover that you are going to attract more traffic there so you are not going to resolve the problem there at any cost 
then aesthetically unpleasant in the city landscape. See what has happened to Nugegod? It's very ugly. Only facility has private vehicle gate. Why? Because uh, you know, uh, if, if just think this uh, Nugegod uh, example, the buses are not going to use it. Why? They have to collect the commuters in this uh, Bowtree Junction or the other side. So they are not going to use the flyover. So who is going to use it? Cow. So that we are going to promote private vehicle transport, sorry, private vehicles. So that is not going to be good for the country. Then uh, a signalization could be still necessary for the junction. So that is what has happened in Nugegode. Okay, you have the flyover and underneath you have the signalized intersection. It shifts the congestion from one point to the other and it does not address the root cause. Now, uh, maybe uh, the Nugegode traffic signal, sorry, Nugegode flyover has reduced the Nugegode congestion, but it has shifted that into Gamsaba junction. So, if you are going to do this, say, then you are going to have a flyover for Gamsaba junction as well. So, it's not going to work. How can we do like that? Then, for the other Vijayaram junction, also we are going to do that. Then, Delkata junction is also we are going to do. So, this is not going to work. So, the best thing is you, you, you better have an elevated highway there. Okay, so that is not the best solution, but one solution. So, but it is preferred for railway crossings. Why? Because otherwise you will have to, there is a good example is Orugodavatta, you know. Now I remember uh, sometimes back, uh, the general manager of Sri, uh, Sri Lankan Railways, he has told that Orugodavatta gate was going to be closed for 18 hours of a day. So you have only 24 hours and you are going to close the gate for 18 hours, only 6 hours left for the vehicles to pass. So what they did was they went and installed a, a flyover and it is a success okay so this preferred for railway crossings okay so i am going to do a case study uh, now remember this is a hypothetical case right actually we didn't do this but uh, this is some hypothetical situation uh, this is kadavata bypass road so kadavata bypass road of course uh, uh, this is the traffic data and uh, what we did was uh, we thought, okay, we'll go and put a flyover there, okay, and then we calculated without without flyover, what happens to the level of service of signalized junction? Here, without the flyover, what is going to be if we are going to put the signalization? What will be the level of service? Now you can see red, red is level of service F, so we cannot go for that. And you cannot have more lanes also. Why? Because you know in uh, one side there is a church and other side you have the bus stand. Now of course uh, I think uh, they are having this multimodal transport uh, center also. So you cannot have acquisition, more acquisition. Okay, so we did some two trials uh, considering right turns, giving right turns separately and uh, here considering all legs separately. That means you allow this leg first, this leg second, third and fourth. Here you allow right turns, this right turn and this right turn together and then these two lanes and here this right turn and this right turn together and then this two lane and this two lane. So this is how the level of service is coming. Right? So it's not very proper. You can see most of the things are level of service F. Of course we have to go for uh, at least level of service C or D. Okay, here uh, somewhat okay with D, but here still we are having uh, level of service F. And then we calculated it with flyover. Now look what has happened because you have removed this through traffic from this C intersection. Then everything is above level of service C. Here some are A, others is B, and the maximum is C. So that is good. Traffic wise, it's good. But here, here only you are going to have the, uh, see the, the flyover. So what will happen to this junction, this junction and this junction? So you can't do that. So you have to consider and you have to have your engineering knowledge and professionalism very well when you are going to select where you are going to install a uh, signalized, sorry, a flyover. Okay, so that's the end of my lecture. And this is an educational lecture at uh, 7 o'clock. Okay, sharp at 7, uh, I could finish. 
now any questions so i think we can take some uh, uh, 10 15 minutes for questions okay thank you uh, engineer salavidana uh, all the members this is the time for you to ask questions uh, we have very limited time uh, 10 to 12 minutes you are having so please raise questions if you have any Okay, engineer Salavidana. So yeah. I'm not a civil engineer, but as a as a motorist uh, as well as a pedestrian, yeah. uh, I I have some concern about the junction. So we today we have all the uh, real time uh, information passing apps and other devices. So yeah. um, can't we have uh, the the real time data? <clears throat> I mean. Um, if we have the the information about the traffic of a junction uh, so can't we use that real time data for passing the message for the vehicles which are supposed to enter that junction so that uh, we can uh, divert those vehicles to uh, use the alternative roads or use some other roads so that we can refrain from many vehicles enter into the that, that junction so are we using that uh, real time data for the moment or uh, do do uh, do you have any plan to use that information well uh, of course uh, us is uh, one of the best proposals but the thing is uh, now you know some 5 years uh, 5 6 years back we had proposal uh, to have this uh, this intelligent transport system intelligent transport system in the sense that you are going to coordinate one signal to the other signal and uh, you are going to uh, do the traffic calculation on site so that means if you are having just think that uh, you have a b c d four legs if your a side traffic is high what you are going to do is you are going to give more green time to this a side like that we try to do something but the only thing is uh, that uh, we didn't have funds for that so that is a major problem of course i think uh, now of course uh, we are lagging behind in most of the cases, not only uh, highway engineering, in most of the cases we are lagging behind because of this fund problem. At least for Colombo, I think we have to go. Otherwise, of course, we cannot control this traffic. Yeah, uh, in uh, in your proposal, yeah, you say uh, so you can pass the message, and uh, so you can even have this display board and say don't use this junction; it is heavy, heavy trafficked. So you can go to other junction. Yes, these are some good practices in developed countries. But our major problem is the funds. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so that uh, I have another question also. Let me switch my language. Yeah. Ah, matra hi theno samhara vela vata kolamba me me apy vehicle parking space unavailability ekat me ekatar isan ne kadhe kela mukade samhara vela vata apy dakhe na gudak. Vehicle park karla di na me parval lai ne me parval carpet karla gudak piya dang karla hadalati na. Abe eva me parking space vidhe to use karma. Apy ta ek mukakhar me 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 regulate karla har mukakhar ek me ekatar hume puluan na mangi tan mamdan na ek ek effective way di kela. Namut tar samhara vela vata me me aata madhati na traffic එක බලපාන සමහර ලාවට මේ ජංක්ෂන්ස් වල traffic එකට එහෙම මොන හරි එහෙම තියෙනවා මම හිතන කොළඹ මොන හරි මෙෂර් සරගෙන ඇති නමුත් ඒත් අපි දකිනවා මේ මේ 3 wheelers ටග් ගාලා පාක් කරලා යනවා සමහරලට මේවා රීසන් එකක් වෙන්න පුළුවන් එහෙම මොන හරි තියෙනවද මොන හරි මේ මේ ඉනිෂියේටිව්ස් ඔව් දැන් ඇත්තටම මෙහෙම ඒක අපේ RD එක කියන එක කොළඹ මහනගර සභාව ඒකොල්ලන්ගේ පාරවල් කොළඹ මහනගර සභාව වෙන්න කරන්නේ නමුත් ඒගොල්ලෝ හොඳ approach එකක් අරගෙන තියෙනවා ඔය විදිහට පාරවල් ලොක් නොවෙන්න පාරවල් වලට යම් යම් ස්ථානවල ඒගොල්ලෝ පාකින් දීලා දෙනවා ඩෙඩිකේටඩ් පාකින් එතකොට ඒ වට ඒගොල්ලෝ ගානකුත් අය කරනවා ඉතින් ඒ ඒ වගේ කරලා කොටස මේක දෙන්න නමුත් වෙලා තියෙන පාකින් නැති තැන් වල කට්ටිය ගිහලා පාක් කරන එක තමයි ඉතින් ඒකට ඒකට ඇත්තටම මම හිතන්නේ නගර සභාවටවත් ආර්ගිකරවත් කරන්න දෙන්නේ ඒක අර ගොඩාක් දුරට පොලීසියෙන් තමයි බලන්නේ 
हम पॉलिस नगर प्रश्न <laughs> පොඩි කාලයක් තියෙනවා මේ මේ ටයිම් එක යූස් කරන්න. Yeah, so if you have any questions you can use uh, either Sinhal or English language that's okay. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Yeah, I think so. That do we have any questions in the chat? No. Yeah, it seems that all the questions answered in your presentation. <laughs> Recording stopped. Yeah. So then, I think we'll wind up. Uh, Recording in progress. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's a nice presentation, and uh, we learn a lot. Uh, something that we uh, don't know, and actually, we don't have any experience about uh, such a um, vast subject. So anyway, uh, um, I. i think uh, now we are running out of time and we have to wind up the session and i invite our uh, provincial chapter secretary engineer khalana to give the word of thank uh, good evening everyone uh, first of all i would like to thank engineer sunit salavidana for spending his valuable time with us uh, today uh, he joined with us uh, with a, sh- a very short notice uh, and educate us in highway engineering especially in junction improvements and intersections uh, particularly this has been a great session for highway engineers especially for, for the engineers in the rda and uh, provincial road development authority uh, so i'd like to thank him for his commitment uh, towards this uh, event uh, finally i'd like to thank all the participants today uh, without your participation this wouldn't be a success uh, again thank you all and have a good night yeah so i would uh, also like to uh, thank all the participants and uh, especially uh, my friend uh, engineer chamila sampath for giving me this opportunity so it's very nice to uh, uh, have a lecture here like this and uh, of course uh, if you have studied anything uh, or 
if you have uh, learned uh, something that uh, you are not uh, you didn't know yet so that is uh, my privilege uh, thank you very much okay